in lesson 45 we're going to work with using f prime to help us graph functions. Now maybe you remember way back in lesson 15 when we were talking about increasing and decreasing functions. What we said there was as x increased, if the subsequent values of f of x also increased, we considered the function increasing on that interval. Well, what we're saying there basically is the slope is positive. Because if that's the case, as x increases, f of x increases, our change in f of x over change in x, or our derivative, is positive. So we can think of the slope of a function to help us determine if it's increasing or decreasing. And I have what I have some things written up here. If f prime of x is greater than zero on an interval, and just assume that it's greater than zero on the entire interval, then f will be increasing. The function will be an increasing function over that interval. If f prime of x is less than zero on an interval, then the function is decreasing on that interval. And then if f prime of x equals zero on an interval, f is constant. Think about it. If we had f of x minus f of a equaled zero, then our derivative would equal zero. The slope would equal zero. In other words, that means f of x equals f of a. If f of x minus f of a equals zero, then f of x equals f of a. f is constant, in other words, if the derivative equals zero. Look at this practice problem. I have a function there and several points identified on it. The question is, at what points is f increasing? When is that function increasing? Well, it's going to be increasing when f prime of x is greater than zero, or when the slope is positive. So what we can do is just kind of estimate some tangents through these different locations. And so at a, there would be the tangent. That's a positive slope. So f is increasing there. We could say point a is one of our answers. At b, the tangent would be a negative slope. C, we would have a positive slope. And maybe you get the drift here. You don't have to do a tangent, draw a tangent, just to see that the slope will be positive or negative. It's pretty easy to tell that D, it would be negative, and E, it would be positive. So those three points, A, C, and E, F is increasing. Now let's use the derivative, F prime, to graph a function. Let's say we know what the derivative is for these different locations or intervals on a function, f. Let's use that information about the derivatives to make a rough sketch of this function. So really, we're not even concerned with what's happening vertically. We could just make a number line and put some tick marks on it. And we'll just label it with a few points. And think about what's happening when x is less than negative 1. The slope is positive. When we get to negative 1, the slope is 0. So that means that's a local maximum or minimum value. Slopes equal to 0 always tell us about a local maximum or minimum. That's something to remember. So before negative 1, we're increasing. We hit negative 1. We have a slope of zero there. So really that's going to be a local maximum because we have a peak in our function. Then to the right of that, between negative one and one, we have a negative slope. So we'll just go ahead and go on down like this. And then at positive one, the slope is zero. So we'll need to go ahead and make a trough right there. Then the slope is greater than zero when we're greater than one. So we'll just go ahead and start increasing up like that. On problems like this, it doesn't really matter vertically where your sketch is. Like this one, though, the most important things are what the slope was doing and then that we had a local maximum here and a local minimum there. And those should be lined up with the appropriate x values. 
So basically, that, that has a form of a cubic polynomial function, right? Like x to the third. We graph the shape of a cubic polynomial function without even knowing anything about the function other than what the slope was doing at different locations, what the derivative of it was doing. But the derivative tells us a lot about the function. It tells us the shape of it, whether it's increasing, decreasing, or a constant for different intervals. Let's go ahead and do one more problem. This one says, suppose f is a function where f prime of 1 is equal to 0. In other words, the slope is 0 when x equals 1. f prime is negative on the interval from minus 2 to 1 and positive on the interval from 1 to 4. Sketch the graph near x equals 1 and identify any local max or min values. Well, we should immediately recognize when the slope is 0, we'll have a local maximum or minimum there. So let's just go ahead and graph this. We don't really need to worry about y values, just x values. We know that we have a slope of 0 when x equals 1. And then f prime is negative on the interval from minus 2 to 1. So we know we'll be coming down to 0. And then the slope is positive on the interval from 1 to 4. So just sketching part of that, we know it's going to be positive. So that means we could identify a local minimum right there at 1. And we could just write on here local min at x equals 1. Some other things to think about. If we know that f prime is negative on the interval minus 2 to 1, we know that the function is decreasing there. And then positive on the interval from 1 to 4, we know the function is increasing on that interval. Derivative means slope. The slope of a function at instantaneous points is very helpful in letting us know what the graph's shape looks like and how the graph is changing with respect to x. Okay, well that's all for lesson 45.